Working at Disney World means you're in the middle of the magic day in and day out, but it all comes with some pretty strict rules and codes of conduct. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Okay, all of the Disney employees, or cast members as they're called, that you'll see on your vacation have gone through hours of training and must follow specific guidelines on their appearance and how they act. All of Disney World is viewed as a stage, and when cast members are on stage, and sometimes when they're not, they need to follow certain rules. These are just 20 of the things Disney employees have to do to keep their jobs. Number one, attend traditions. So traditions is Disney's mandatory training and orientation program. It lasts four hours and everyone must attend no matter how low or high your position, whether you're in the college program or you're the CEO. This is where cast members learn all the basics, all the rituals and basically everything else you'll find on this list. The course covers rules of safety, etiquette, and parking company history. And basically it's everything you need to know to uphold the Disney brand. New cast members tour the Utilidors, which are the tunnels beneath Magic Kingdom, and get their first name tag along with a Mickey ear hat. All right, second thing you have to do to keep your job, never sell your comp tickets. Cast members will get main gate tickets or comp tickets to the parks as part of their job perks, but those are never allowed to be sold. If a cast member gets caught selling their employee tickets, it's immediate termination. Number three, never drink or misbehave with your name tag on. Drinking with your name tag on is an absolute N-O. Once you're on stage with that name tag on, you are representing Disney and everything you do needs to be in line with the company policies at all times. So if you've got the name tag on, you're working and drinking on the job is a surefire way to get fired from Disney. All right, number four, keep facial hair at the right length. Disney's recently relaxed some of the quote Disney look unquote rules, but it's still pretty strict. Men can now have a one inch beard or a mustache and they're allowed to have visible stubble while growing it out to that one inch. Stubble used to be a big no-no by the way. You'd have to grow it out while you're on vacation. But all facial hair definitely has to fit the Disney look. All right, number five, you must pin trade. If a cast member is working in a retail location, they better be ready to give up those pins because pin trading is required. Disney keeps some buckets of pins just backstage for this purpose, but anything on that lanyard is up for grabs if a guest wants to trade. Resort front desks and guest services locations typically have pin boards if you're looking to trade some pins. Right now, there are a few designated pin trading locations in the parks to allow for the pins to be sanitized properly. All right, number six, everybody knows this one, always point with two fingers. We recently talked about how the two finger point is a bit of an homage to Walt himself and his not so magical smoking habit, but the official word from Disney is about respect for other cultures. Some cultures view pointing with one finger impolite, while the two finger point is not offensive. This might be something you've never actually noticed before, but check it out the next time a cast member is directing you where to go. They're always gonna use two fingers. All right, no photos backstage. Cast members are barred from breaking the magic, and that means no photos backstage and no bragging about being Cinderella's friend. Disney is very strict with social media policies for employees and sharing behind the scenes details can get you fired. Being on your phone while on stage isn't allowed either. Cast members can carry their phone in their pocket while working, but they're never allowed to use it unless it's a literal emergency. All right, this one's kind of crazy. No crazy nails or nail colors. You'll never see a cast member with crazy sparkly nails. That's because there are strict rules on everything to do with appearance, even down to your fingernails. Nails must be kept short, well manicured, and if painted, that color needs to be neutral and complement your costume. And of course, if your nails have to be on point, so does your hair. You must always have a natural hair color while working for Disney. So if you dye your hair, you're gonna need to keep up on those roots. Hair must always be a natural color that looks like it could have grown out of your head. And if your roots are showing, you'll need to get it touched up fast. Hair must also be styled in a professional manner and men can't have hair longer than their ears or back of their collar. All right, number 10, keep jewelry and makeup low key. Nothing about your appearance should draw too much attention while you're working at Disney. Brightly colored makeup is a no-go and jewelry must be kept super simple. Allowable jewelry got an update along with the one inch beard rule. Now cast members can wear one simple necklace or bracelet in addition to a simple pair of earrings. Now you can't have any logos either. Most of a cast member's outfit will be logo free, but if they're wearing sunglasses, they better not have a logo on them. Sunglasses have to come off when speaking with guests, and even when sunglasses are allowed, they can't block an employee's eyes from view completely. No super dark or mirrored lenses. 
Water bottles can't show logos either. Cast members will remove bottle labels or keep them stored in an unmarked bottle carrier. All right, so piercings and tattoos are also a no-go for cast members. No extra piercings are allowed beyond a single ear piercing and visible tattoos are not allowed either. Most costumes have long sleeve and long pant variations to help cover any tattoos. Otherwise, cast members use an opaque makeup to cover any tattoos that might otherwise be visible. No eating on the job, number 13. Cast members are definitely allowed to take breaks for a meal, but they can't chow down in the middle of the park in their work costume. There are employee break rooms at each park, and there are a few backstage places to grab some lunch. There's even a Subway sandwich shop in the Utilidors beneath the Magic Kingdom. And each park has a cafeteria for employees to grab a meal as well. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Next up, you do have to get changed after work in order to keep your job at Disney. Cast members are not supposed to hit the grocery store in full work costume. Name tags must be removed when you clock out and employees are encouraged to change or at least cover up a good portion of their costume if they're making a target run on the way home. But this is probably one we've seen broken many, many, many more times than the others. Obviously, lots of people in the Orlando area work at Disney, and from time to time, I'm sure you've spotted a costumed person at Publix. But in general, cast members are supposed to keep the magic separate from the real world as best they can. Number 15, no selfies with celebrities. So celebrities visit Disney all the time, but if you're working there, you cannot fangirl or fanboy out and ask for a selfie or an autograph. Celebs are supposed to be treated like any other guest, and it's Disney policy to keep your cool when you're around them. Next up, be well behaved even off the clock. So cast members definitely go to the parks on their day off. They want to enjoy Disney too, and that's one of the perks of working there. But just because it's their day off doesn't mean Disney employees can go crazy drinking around Epcot. And if a cast member gets in trouble, even off the clock, it can mean some big consequences. Number 17, you got to learn to speak in code. Disney employees will speak in code when they need to announce something or notify other cast members of a situation. For instance, 101 means that a ride is temporarily down. 102 means it's back up and running. So if you ever hear a cast member say, Space Mountain is 101, that means you're not riding Space Mountain for a while. Codes are usually used in front of guests, and most guests won't know what 101 means, and it sounds a whole lot better than the ride just broke down. And using 102 when it's working again can prevent a rush of people headed to the queue, but now you guys know. And there are other codes for a lost child, a fire, or if someone loses their lunch on a ride. That one's referred to as a protein spill or a signal V. Something else that Disney cast members have to make sure they do is recognize that Disney World doesn't exist when you're in Galaxy's Edge. You might not realize it, but all of the cast members working in Galaxy's Edge are playing a character, and that character lives in a galaxy far, far away and has never heard of Disney World. There's a whole bunch of Batu lingo that is used in Galaxy's Edge. Bright suns for good morning, till the spire, to say good night or goodbye. But if you ask how to get to Rock and Roller Coaster when you're in Star Wars land, you'll probably get some kind of correct answer, but it won't be a direct take the left off of Hollywood Boulevard. And if you're trying to find that Baby Yoda photo op, ask about the child. The term Baby Yoda will not get you too far, trust us. But as we've given this advice before, if you really, really need to find something out from a cast member in Batu, just let them know that you really need to find it out to please not play their character at the moment and just tell you how to find the bathroom. <laughs> Also, you can never say, I don't know. Cast members are super knowledgeable and should be able to answer any standard question a guest might have, like how to get somewhere or the park hours. But if something more complicated comes up, they can't say, I don't know. Cast members will always need to find the answer to a guest's question, or at least let them know they don't have any more information on something after checking with a manager. And I love this one, number 20. This reminds me of Walt Disney himself, and that is to pick up the trash and the litter and the garbage. Now, every Disney employee, no matter what your position, is expected to help keep the park clean. If you notice a piece of trash, you've got to pick it up, but you can't just stoop down and grab it. Cast members are trained to swoop and scoop. It's basically a choreographed move to make picking up trash look a little more graceful. And like I said, this does remind me of Walt because I know Walt did this when he was in Disneyland, that he would make sure to ensure that the park was beautiful and clean and he would pick up garbage himself. So Disney has an entire handbook that covers these rules and so many more very detailed specifics on appearance and etiquette and cast members need to know and follow each and every one of those rules. 
Were any of these surprising to you? Could you handle all the rules that come with being a Disney employee? Have you been a cast member and have some funny stories about following all these guidelines? Let us know in the comments. Thank you guys for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog and we'll see you real soon.